Have you ever asked yourself, wow, this strategy game has some really funky shapes that my units can travel around, but all these maps are handmade. Would it be possible to randomly generate them to be different every time? Yes. All this is, is a collection of randomly generated points whose nearest neighbor pixels have been visualized. Also known as Voronoi noise, or cellular noise. But I'm not going to show you how to do Voronoi noise because it doesn't actually give you the data points for where the borders are. It's an image generation function. And also I don't actually know how to write Voronoi noise. I'm going to show you how to get the numbers you need to actually make these shapes so that you can turn those numbers into polygons that you can look at and go, wow, that's a grand strategy map waiting to happen. Step one, randomly generate a bunch of points within a set rectangular boundary. You could do this like this, or like this, or like this. It really doesn't matter how you get them, as long as you end up with an array of vector two positions that are all within a specified boundary, you're good to go. Step two, this is a Delaunay triangulation. It's an algorithm that results in a set of points that make triangles, and the circumcircles of those triangles do not contain any of the points in the set. A circumcircle is just the circle that touches all three points of a triangle. Every single triangle has one of these, and the center of that circle is called the circumcenter. The Delaunay triangulation tends to make triangles with angles that are as even as possible, you feed the algorithm a set of points, and it tells you which of those points should connect to make all these triangles. It also turns out that the Delaunay triangulation of a set of points forms a dual graph with the Voronoi diagram for that set of points. The circumcenters of all the triangles formed by a Delaunay triangulation match one-to-one -one with the corners of the Voronoi diagram, and the corners of a Voronoi diagram are exactly what you need to draw that diagram as a bunch of polygons in space. This means we can feed our random set of points into a Delaunay triangulation, and then perform a bunch of operations on the output to get the coordinates of all their borders. Now, I don't know how to write a Delaunay triangulation. I'm not going to tell you how to do a Delaunay triangulation either. If you want to know how, listen to or read the explanation of someone smarter than me. I did this in Godot, which conveniently has a Geometry 2D class with a triangulate Delaunay function. I'm pretty sure Unreal and Unity have similar functions, though I don't know where to find them, I haven't used those engines. Our triangulate Delaunay function gives us an array of integers, which are the index values of the points used to make the triangles. Every three integers is a triangle, because there are three points in a triangle. So we can divide the array size by three to find how many triangles were created in total. The equation for a circumcircle of a triangle, given its three points, is... Okay, so I copied this one from the internet. Thank you, Anna... Stepanek. ...for writing this article. This is it in code form. We can iterate through the array provided by a Delaunay triangulation, three at a time, feeding those three points of each triangle to the circumcenter calculator, and sticking all those circumcenters in an array for usage later. Okay, so it's later now. We need to be able to match these circumcenters to their nearest points of origin, as any given point may have any number of circumcenters that match to it. We can do this by first creating an array of vector2 arrays, with as many vector2 arrays as there are points, and then iterating through the array provided by our Delaunay triangulation, triangle at a time, and appending the circumcenter of each triangle to the three vector arrays whose indexes are given by the Delaunay triangle. We thus end up with an array of vectors, where the index of the array corresponds to the index of the point that was fed into the Delaunay triangulation, and the contents of the array is the coordinates of its corners. These points are in any old order, so we're going to need to sort them. Thankfully, Godot's trusty Geometry 2D class has a convex hull function, which allows us to easily do this step. Be careful though, I'm fairly certain there's a very slim chance of this failing, or missing a corner if the angles between any points are too sharp. Alright, so... Now that we have our points, we can use them to make our polygon. So the polygons at the border end up looking, uh, pretty extreme. This might be a Godot only issue, and it happens because when our Delaunay function is looking at what points can be matched into triangles, as it looks at the points closest to the borders, it doesn't really discriminate. And we end up with these triangles 
Usakum Centers are two screens away. I was stuck on how to fix this for a while, and credit goes to Arcane Right, whose Voronoi generator made me realize the solution I needed was chunks. If we look at our shapes, it's only the border points who get really weird with it. All of the points inside of them are fine. So we can just pretend that the points wrap round and we should get a Delorny triangulation that is much more normal. To pretend that our world is chunked and can loop, we just need to duplicate each point eight times so that our map of real points is surrounded by eight phantom versions of itself. This does mean we have to do a little extra work during our main process. We create our phantom points before the Delorny, we find our circumcenters, and create the array of vector twos to have a set of points in their corners, including the phantom arrays. And then we slice that array at the index of our original point count to remove all of the phantom points. All right, we've finally got our output. You can now take any set of random points, feed them into this sequence of functions, and you'll get an array of corner points that you can use to create polygons matching their Voronoi diagram. Yay! But what if we want them to be less oddly shaped? We can see that because the points are randomly distributed, we can get some really wacky shapes. Lloyd's relaxation is one way of doing this. Given a set of polygons, you find their centroids, and then feed those centroids back into the polygon machine to get their new set of corners. The more times you do this, the more evenly shaped your shapes will be. The centroid of a polygon is its center of mass, and can be calculated by adding all the points together and dividing by the number of points, also known as taking their mean. Thanks, Wikipedia. By the way, be careful not to confuse our original points, the circumcenters of the triangles produced by their Delorny triangulation, nor the centroids that are produced by the polygons formed from their Voronoi diagram. These are absolutely different things. These shapes are great, but unfortunately their edges are straight between the corners, which, compared to our handmade strategy game, is not nearly as compelling. If only we had some way of adding noise to the edges of our shape. Red Blob Games describes the process of noising edges. You first add a division point halfway between the two points. Moving in a direction perpendicular to the edge adds a little curve to the edge. If we continue adding subdivisions, then our straight edge starts expressing much more weird and beautiful curves. I hope everyone can express more weird and beautiful curves. Okay, so because Red Blob Games doesn't explain it, I'm going to speedrun an overlay explanation of the vector math to make noisy edges. You ready? We have the edges for each polygon, so we're going to iterate over each pair of points once. Because we're giving our sorting function the corners of a polygon, and every polygon has its points ordered in the same direction, anti-clockwise, neighboring polygons will go through their edges in reverse order. To fix this, we make the first vector whichever vector has the lowest x value, and if their x values are the same, we make it the one with the lowest y value. If both their x and y values are the same, that means we have two corners in exactly the same position, and if that happens, then we've got bigger problems. We find the vector for the edge by subtracting one from the other. We can then find the halfway point by adding half of the edge vector to one of the corner vectors. We can find the perpendicular vector by constructing a vector whose x and y are swapped, and making either the x or the y negative. We can then add our perpendicular vector, multiplied by an amplitude value to the halfway point. Taking our shifted halfway vector, we then insert it into the array of corners at the 2x plus 1 position of the current iteration. This gives us curved edges, but they're all pointing in the same direction, because the perpendicular vector is the same amplitude for each one. We can't randomize the amplitude, because neighbors share borders, so we're going to sample noise instead. We can sample noise by first making a noise image that is noisy enough that small changes in coordinates give vastly different values. We scale the halfway point by dividing it by the size of the map and multiplying it by the size of the noise, and do a quick positive modulo operation to make any values that have snuck outside of the map shift back into the right position. Then we sample the noise at this scaled vector position, take the red value and subtract by 0.5 to get a scale from minus 0.5 to 0.5 based on the value of the noise. Multiplying our perpendicular vector by this value gives us a random, but consistent based on map position vector to adjust the edges by, which now results in some beautiful curvy shapes. As a quick note, I don't take the distance between the two polygon centers as an input, because frankly, I've done enough data management for maybe the next two years, and I figured just the right amplitude number would keep things simple. If we set the amplitude too high, the polygons stop rendering, which I assume is something to do with the triangulation functions failing. Probably. 
I, there's your shapes. I've no doubt that we can do some more operations on them to gain more control over how they look. Like, rounding the points at the end so that the world is a rectangle, or spending one to three months learning more advanced maths to figure out how to make the points generate a shape that accurately represents a spherical planet. But I'm happy enough with this for now. I'm going to move on to the functions I run to get some very important data that makes these shapes actually usable for strategy game purposes. As a note, the functions I'm about to talk about all happen after the Lloyd relaxation. None of this needs to be fed back into the machine to generate more points. If we want to know which points are neighbours with each other, we can iterate again through our Delaunay indexes, three at a time, to find the indexes that form triangles. We know these indexes are neighbours, because the circumcenter of their triangle is in all three of their corner polygon arrays. If we create an array of integer arrays, and resize it to however many points we have, then for each point in the corner, we can append the other two points to the integer array at that point's index. Our phantom points are still lurking in the background, ready to ruin our day, and those phantom circumcenters that like to get freaky with it are doing their best to blend in with the crowd. So we need to make sure that we remove them before we assign all these neighbors. We can do this by setting a maximum phantom world size and then removing any points that do not fit inside it from the circumcenter array and removing their respective three points in the Delaunay indexes array. Then, when we iterate through the array to find their neighbors, we make sure to recalibrate any phantom world indexes back to their real world index. Getting the neighbors allows us to construct an A-star map of our polygons, which allows for navigation to happen between our polygons. If you ask me, navigation in a strategy game seems like an absolutely necessary feature, but who am I to argue? I also want to find the areas of the provinces. To calculate the area of a polygon, given its points in sequence, you can use something called the trapezoid formula, which... It just looks like this. This is the code. I'm not going to bother explaining any more math than the little that I already have. Having the area of our shape allows us to figure out how much land there is, which, if you ask me, seems like another very important feature for your strategy game, but I'm not going to start arguing about it now. Anyway, there you have it. A consistent, stable way of generating a whole load of shapes, with some control over how wobbly they are and how to get some data you might need. If you want to go further, like I'm currently doing, you can make biomes like this, by running a second, smaller set of points through the algorithm to generate a map with evenly distributed, but unrealistic looking, biomes. Or you could go the route that Red Blob Games went and make a more realistic looking map. I've linked to a Godot project in the description with all the relevant code I've explained today, if you want to see how it works. Apologies if there's a weird line or two in there, I got really stuck in the weeds with it and might have missed some lines that literally did nothing if they weren't throwing errors at me. Alright.